Hey guys, this is Saptashi here and welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we are going to introduce you to recommendation system, also known as recommendation engine. We are going to look at some very basic characteristics and some of the types of recommender system. So if you ponder a little bit and look around, recommendations are all around us. So be it in terms of uh, the books that you are going to buy, the music that you are going to listen to, the movie you are going to watch, any merchandise that you are going to buy, any travel plan that you are going to make. So all these places, there are recommendations. This particular one is an example from LinkedIn where connections are recommended to you, right? Whom you should potentially get connected to. Uh, this one is from YouTube where some videos are getting recommended. This one is from Amazon where some products or mar merchandise are getting recommended. And this is a very, very important skill to you know pick up or acquire now. The reason is that by 2025, recommendation system market size is estimated to be 12 billion US dollars uh, with a year on year growth rate between 30 to 35 percent. Okay. Having said that, let's look at some of the basic things about recommendation. So recommendation system actually has three components. You have users, okay? You have products, all right? And you have feedbacks. So users actually give feedback about products. And on the basis of that, you can think of recommending some new products to that, that particular user or maybe a new user altogether. And in this case, the feedbacks that we have shown here is a rating, but uh, you know the feedback can be explicit where it is kind of rating or it can be implicit. So some uh, user uh, has watched a movie but has not rated it. So as he has watched it, you know that he must have liked the movie, okay? Or, or he had some affinity towards that movie, all right? And typically, you know, a recommendation system uh, will be represented in terms of a matrix. All right. So where, you know, you will have different rows. So these rows will correspond to different users. So these are corresponding to users. And then you will have columns which actually corresponds to products. So in this case, these are movies. All right. So uh, generically, you can say these are for products. All right. And this matrix has a particular name. The name is called as utility matrix or preference matrix. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's look at the formal objective of a recommendation system. So you know we are given an M into N matrix, right? So you have M users and N uh, products. So it's an incomplete matrix, right? Because not all items are rated by all users. So the rated items are now used to predict the items that are not rated. So this is one of the broad goals of recommendation system. Okay, so fill in the gaps, right? And uh, another way of thinking of the same goal is instead of predicting the rating for all the items, it may be practical to find out top K items to be recommended for a user. Okay, so I don't want to fill out all uh, ratings, but I for a particular user, I want to find out maybe top five products that are to be uh, predicted to me or recommended to me. Another problem can also be top K user for an item. So a new item is getting launched, which you know, top users are more likely to buy that product. All right. Okay. Now let's look at some of the goals and types of a recommendation system. So of course, the recommendation that you are making must be relevant. Okay. So if they are not relevant, the users will not be happy and are not going to like your service at all. Another uh, thing is that the recommendations should be novel, okay? So it shouldn't be very, very obvious, right? So there should be some variation in the pattern, right? So you already you already like some kind of food, maybe, maybe Thai food you like, and a new Thai uh, restaurant has come up in your locality. So that may be recommended to you, not something uh, which is, which is uh, entirely present and known to you, right? And then there is something called as serendipity, right? So serendipity is about the surprise element. So there is a basic difference between, you know, surprise element and novelty. 
So here you will you so so uh, in case of novelty, the example that I gave was of Thai cuisine. So you already know that that user uh, likes Thai, right? So what you have done is you have recommended a new restaurant, but here maybe you are going to recommend to him continental food, which maybe he has not tasted earlier. Okay, so that is kind of uh, that can be of interest to the user, right? And then another thing is that the recommendation that you are giving, so it is not one recommendation. The recommendation should be very very diverse, right? So I mean I may know that you are you you like burgers a lot, but you know, if I only, uh, you know, give you options like different McDonald's and uh, Burger Kings and uh, KFC, maybe you will not be very happy with that kind of recommendation. Okay. Another thing is that uh, coming to the types of recommendation system. So it can be content based, okay, collaborative, knowledge based and hybrid. Okay. So I will just uh, take some time and explain you about each one of them. All right. So let's look at content based recommendation first. All right. So, you know, what happens is that I have a user and I know that this user has read, uh, read this book. Okay. So maybe read. So this is implicit, maybe rated. Okay. So this data is already available to me. And what I also have is this book's description. Okay. So based on the book's description, the author, the genre, maybe some description about about uh, about the script or about uh, the story okay uh, you find out that which uh, books are similar okay and uh, the similar books or similar news items whatever you know you are you are comparing here you find it similar you recommend this back to him okay so this is how a content based recommendation system works let's look at some of its advantages and disadvantages okay so first thing is it considers static characteristics of a movie or any product, right? So its description, genre, director, actor, etc. to find similar movies. So this is one of the characteristics, okay? And a user-specific model is created, all right? Because, you know, uh, the training set in, in your machine learning terminology consists of items that are rated by this particular user, right? And the rating is the target variable the descriptive features work as the input variable. Okay, so you know this when you will apply for a new product, you can understand that whether this person is going to like this or not. Okay, so the advantage is that it can work when other users rating is not available. So this is a very, very important thing, right? So one of the things that we'll discuss in later classes is this matrix that we discussed about are really huge in nature. Okay cannot be stored in memory all right and uh, you know uh, another characteristics is that uh, you know they are very sparsely populated because let's say there are 50,000 movies okay so a user may have maximum seen 100 to 200 movies right so rest of the entries for that particular users are going to be empty okay so this gives a lot of challenges which will uncover in our next set of lectures however what we wanted to say is that it can work when other users rating is not available because you are just looking at uh, you are just looking at similarity between the items okay and new items do not suffer from cold start problem so this is one of the problems again dis discussed that you know if there is a new user so you don't know what to be recommended to him okay similarly you know uh, if there is a new item you don't know uh, which users this item should be recommended to Okay, so this is typically called as the cold start problem and here as you are using the item description instead of the rating. Okay, so this is uh, this doesn't suffer from this cold start problem. Okay, these advantages that you know it gives obvious recommendations. So the novelty, the serendipity, surprise element that we were talking about will not be present when we are using a content based recommendation system. The one most studied is called as collaborative recommendation. Okay, so uh, collaborative uh, recommendation system, you already have the recommendations available. There are two approaches which you follow. The first approach is called as user-based collaborative filtering. So what you do is you find out that which users are similar to a particular user, right? And based on their past history, 
what they have bought or you know what they have written all right and based on that uh, you find out the products that has been taken up by the similar users okay but has not been taken out by, by him okay so maybe uh, this person has you know taken products a b c and these guys have taken products like a b c and d right so in this case what will happen is that this d which is not taken by this user will be recommended to this user right so this is called as user based recommendation okay now as the name suggests in item based uh, recommendation what is done is you know from this user what we find out is that what product this guy has brought so maybe he has again brought a b c right now what we find out is that in terms of similarity now this similarity is not about descriptive attributes okay so this is a very very common confusion when we start talking about item based collaborative filtering okay so this when we are trying to now find similar items with a b c what we are going to find out is that which items are similarly rated as a b and c okay so maybe that product is e then this item is uh, this item is again recommended back to this user right so collaborative filtering has these two basic distinctions all right and next come is knowledge based recommendation so knowledge based recommendation typically happens when you don't have a lot of history or it is a particular type of product where you don't make a purchase every time so purchases are relatively rare one particular example is real estate okay so uh, you you don't have a particular user's history right so in this case what you try to do is you try to acquire knowledge from the user itself okay so you try to find out uh, some so you, you try to get what user is looking for uh, from uh, in terms of some queries right so in this case you know uh, some queries about about the house that he is trying to purchase right and once you have that from that query you found find out similar properties and you recommend back to him right so uh, this is what is knowledge based recommendation happens as i said where, where you know that the uh, information is much more lesser frequency of buying is lesser so you get some idea from the user in terms of queries which give you some knowledge to recommend products to him okay and then finally you have something called as hybrid recommendation system okay so hybrid recommendation system actually combines multiple strategies so whatever we discussed in terms of your user based item based or knowledge based okay so they can be combined in different manner and hybrid recommendation can work so you can understand that hybrid recommendation has a lot of appeal right uh, so you know you can you can get you can get recommendation for a particular user from user based collaborative filtering you can get items from uh, you know item based collaborative filtering and then you can either uh, you know if you want to be very very sure a uh, sure set of products you can give him an intersection and if you want to bring a lot of diversity you may you know union them and recommend back okay so in today's lecture we tried to give you an understanding of recommendation system you know which is one of the very very evolving fields right now and we discussed different types okay so in case you guys have questions do feel free to put that in comments we will go through them and answer thank you so much guys for watching if you find this video helpful please like subscribe and comment thanks once again